Jeffrey Hinton. Jeffrey Hinton. Jeffrey Hinton, widely seen as the godfather of artificial intelligence, has quit his job at Google, warning of the dangers of AI. Does humanity know what it's doing? No. We're moving into a period when, for the first time ever, we may have things more intelligent than us. We have a very good idea of sort of roughly what it's doing, but as soon as it gets really complicated, we don't actually know what's going on any more than we know what's going on in your brain. What do you mean we don't know exactly how it works? It was designed by people. No, it wasn't. Take a look at this graph. It represents how frequently the word AI has been searched on Google since 2004. For nearly two decades, the line looks fairly flat, with occasional spikes here and there. That was until 2022. Chances are, this is when you first became familiar with the word as well. The reason? It was simple. Chat GPT. Chat GPT. Chat GPT. Maybe you've heard of it. If you haven't, then get ready, because this promises to be the viral sensation that could completely reset how we do things. It's as revolutionary as the internet. Hey, it's Ryan Reynolds, owner of Mint Mobile. Uh, you know, we're always looking for ways to save you money. So this year, we're kicking things off with an ad that I created using Chat GPT. It was an AI chatbot where you could input a text and it would output a response. It wasn't just a fun little thing to do, it was actually useful. It could drastically improve writing by generating full-on essays, something students would know a little too much about. It could help write code, explain complex topics, and could even offer life advice, all within a matter of seconds. ChatGPT became the most downloaded app in the world, and curiosity grew about the person behind it all. Enter Sam Altman, the CEO of OpenAI. As AI rose in popularity, he became kind of the face of the industry, often seen as its spokesperson. But behind the scenes, there was a lesser known figure who arguably had as great of an impact. His name is Jeffrey Hinton. Altman and Hinton initially shared what would be a friendly relationship as they would cross paths due to their mutual interest in AI. But in recent years, things have drastically changed and the reasons why will make sense later on. I'm particularly proud of the fact that one of my students fired Sam Altman. Um, and I think I'd better leave it there and leave it for questions. In 2023, Hinton made the decision to quit his job at Google so that he could openly speak about his growing concerns regarding AI. This wasn't just a small warning, it was him sounding the alarm about the future of humanity. But to understand how we even got to this point, we need to go back to the 1960s. At the time, AI was simple. The first ever chatbot was created, which operated by identifying keywords in the user's input and responding with pre-programmed phrases. Shortly after, the first ever intelligent robot was born, which used cameras and sensors to perceive its environment and navigate rooms. Artificial intelligence was a small yet emerging field, and there was general excitement about its potential to benefit society. However, the optimism would soon disappear. The following decades will be labeled as the AI winter, a period marked by much slower growth than anticipated. A major factor behind this was hardware limitations, as computers at the time were simply too slow to support ambitious AI projects. The bold promises made by early AI pioneers failed to become a reality. As a result, governments sharply cut funding for AI research. The goal of having AI be involved with people's daily lives seemed increasingly unlikely. With funding drying up, many research teams shifted their focus to other fields, and most of the early pioneers lost faith of their initial vision. Except for one person. It was just obvious to me that it was the right way to go. The brain's a big neural network. And so it has to be that stuff like this can work because it works in our brains. There's just never any doubt about that. In the 1990s, they hadn't lived up to their promise and most people stopped working on them. But you didn't stop. You it kept at it. It seemed to me there was no other possibility. The brain has to work somehow. They didn't work quite well enough because we didn't have enough data and we didn't have enough compute power. And people in AI and computer science have decided neural networks was wishful thinking, basically. Throughout the 80s and the 90s, Hinton was one of a few people who continued to develop this technology. Did people tell you, Jeffrey, you're wasting your time. Think of something else to do. Many times. When I was doing my PhD, my advisor would tell me that every week. 
Was there like a time when you thought this just wasn't going to work and, and you, you no. did have some self-doubt? I mean, I, there were many times when I thought, I'm not going to make this work. <laughs> After multiple decades of relentless effort, with no guarantee of knowing his work would ever pay off, the world begins to catch up to Hinton's ideas. From the 1990s to the 2000s, computers became drastically more powerful, and with it came the rise of the internet. Your link to literature, the arts, the world at your fingertips. It spans the globe like a superhighway. It is called internet. The explosion of the internet resulted in a vast amount of digital data, marking a turning point where AI began to shift from relying on hand-coded rules to learning from data. Throughout the 2000s, AI began solving practical problems that made life easier, often without people even realizing AI was involved. Email services used AI to filter spam. YouTube implemented an algorithm that suggested videos tailored to your interest. Apple's release of Siri brought a friendly voice-controlled assistant to the general public. By the late 2010s, AI was everywhere. It curated our social media feeds, recommended music to us, and even powered virtual assistants in our homes. But it wasn't until the release of ChatGPT that AI truly became mainstream. By 2023, the AI race had begun. After seeing the public response of ChatGPT, many tech giants rushed to integrate their own AI chatbots. We saw Gemini by Google, Copilot by Microsoft, Claude by Anthropic. I mean, there are so many chatbots, it honestly gets confusing differentiating which is which. There was a shift of big tech companies realizing the potential profits of AI. And it was exactly this that sparked a growing fear in Jeffrey Hinton. Big companies are motivated by short-term profits. They have an obligation to their shareholders to make big profits. And making big profits, um, particularly in the short term, doesn't align nicely with putting a lot of effort into making sure it's safe. OpenAI, the company responsible for ChatGPT, was established in 2015 with a non-profit structure in order to prioritize safety and ethical considerations over profit motives. However, this changed to a capped profit structure in 2019 and eventually shifted towards a for-profit a few years later. Sam Altman was criticized for this decision by Jeffrey Hinton, Elon Musk, and other prominent figures in the space, as there were concerns about the company now prioritizing investor returns over the ethical development of AI. Why should we trust you? Um, you shouldn't. When Jeffrey Hinton made the decision to leave Google, it sparked growing concerns about the future of AI. Not long after, the general public began to feel the effects of this uncertainty. Artificial intelligence is coming to replace programmers. There are no programmers in five years. No programmers in five years. Almost everybody who sits on a stage like this would tell you, it is vital that your children learn computer science. And in fact, it's almost exactly the opposite. It is our job to create computing technology such that nobody has to program. More recently, a new slang phrase has gained popularity called vibe coding. The vibe coding. Vibe coding is the future. Explain what vibe coding is. You don't need a team of 50 or 100 engineers. You can just have a team of 10 when they are uh, fully vibe coders. Instead of writing code line by line like you would before, now you can just describe the idea or vibe of what you want and let AI generate most of the code. But it doesn't stop at vibe coding because there's also vibe designing. In late March of 2025, OpenAI released a new image generation model, which went viral for its ability to transform images into a Studio Ghibli style look. But it was also really good at creating other types of images, one of them being graphic design style posters. It was so good it made you wonder how much longer until there won't be a need for graphic designers. Along with the rise of AI came the rise of deepfakes, a term used to describe AI-generated media that manipulates images, audio, or video, making it appear as though people are saying or doing things they never actually did. I'm going to show you two videos. One is real, one is altered by AI. Can you spot the deepfake? The book that I got excited about reading through. It's called This Can't Be Happening in McDonald Hall. It's called how the Prime Minister stole freedom. Yeah, it was the last one. The Prime Minister never said that. In 2022, there was a deepfake video of the President of Ukraine telling his troops to surrender. 
this deepfake was easy to spot, but the next one may not be. Given all the negative consequences of AI, you may wonder why not at the very least slow down the development to ensure safety measures are put in place to prevent people from misusing it. Well, the answer is simple, competition. Google was very concerned about these issues and Google didn't release the big chatbots. It was concerned about its reputation if they told lies. But as soon as OpenAI went into business with Microsoft and Microsoft put chatbots into Bing, Google had no choice. But it's not just competition between companies of the same country. There is an even larger issue at hand, arguably the most important of them all, which is the global race of AI. For the most part, it was believed that US was far ahead of all other countries in the AI race. I mean, it made sense. Hundreds of billions of dollars were poured into AI. The US has among the best research facilities in the world, and they have more access to high performance AI chips. But it all changed on January of 2025. Let's talk about DeepSeek because it is mind blowing and it is shaking this entire industry to its core. DeepSeek, a Chinese AI startup, released their equivalent of ChatGPT, an open source R1 model. What made it so special was that it matched the performance of leading Western models like OpenAI's GPT-40 and did so at a fraction of the cost and computational resources. Shortly after the release, it became the most downloaded app in America, surpassing ChatGPT. So what does this all mean? Well, the global race is one of the most important topics related to AI because of three major reasons, culture, economy, and warfare. When you talk to an AI, a part of it is a reflection of ideologies, values, and culture. I'll give you an example. If you ask any Chinese AI system a question about President Xi Jinping, the leader of China, it will say that it can't talk about it. This is because there's regulation in China that prevents certain information from being shared. Now, this is a fairly harmless example. But if you just think about the concept of censoring or altering information, you can start to see how this may lead to misinformation and propaganda. For the economic aspect, AI is expected to drive massive economic growth through automation, increasing productivity, and creating new markets. And the country that's leading the AI race will reap the benefits. For warfare, AI is already transforming the landscape. Drones equipped with AI are flying into battle in Ukraine and are reportedly three to four times more likely to hit their target than drones piloted solely by humans. As powerful as AI is today, there's something even bigger on the horizon. AGI, Artificial General Intelligence. This is the ultimate goal for AI. Today's AIs are trained to complete a narrow set of tasks. An AI that can recognize your voice and answer questions, or an AI that can beat humans at chess. But those same AIs can't swap roles. A chess AI can't suddenly start driving a car or chat about your favorite movie. That's not what it was built for. But AGI would act like a jack of all trades AI. It's flexible and adaptable. It could handle many different tasks and topics, doing so at a human level. If AGI is achieved, it would completely transform the world, solving complex problems in science, medicine, and engineering by thinking across different domains of knowledge. On the other hand, their advanced capabilities may enable them to act in ways that are unpredictable or uncontrollable and pose a serious threat to humanity. It's going to get smarter than us. Almost all the leading researchers agree that. So we all agree it's going to get smarter than us. And the question is, what happens then? And basically, we have no idea. As of 2025, Jeffrey Hinton's mission has remained the same. Advocate for AI safety and the responsible development of AI. Right now, we're at a point in history where there's still a chance we could figure out how to develop super intelligent AI and make it safe. We don't know how to do that. We don't even know if it's possible. And if it is possible, we ought to try and figure that out. And we ought to spend a lot of effort trying to figure that out. 